Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to BTV Candlepin Bowling. We're at the Rollaway Lanes, and I'm Dick Leone. I'll be hosting this evening's show once again. We've got ourselves the makings of a great match. We've got the champion of four weeks, Al Joy, from the Pride's Corner Lanes in Westbrook. And we've got a challenger who is uh, a great one in, a, in his own right, Don Saucia from Vacationland Lanes in Saco. In just one minute, we're going to bring back, uh, bring up Don Saucia, the challenger, and then following him, of course, we'll bring up the champion, Al Joy. So don't go away. We've got three strings of good head-to-head -head competition upcoming here at the Rollaway Lanes in Biddeford. All right, we're back here at the Rollaway Lanes, and to my left is Don Saucier. And Don, uh, you've been on the Candlepin uh, bowling scene for some time now. I remember watching you when I was uh, a lot younger, and you were a lot younger. Uh, but you uh, have been on a lot of uh, television shows, so the lights and the cameras are not really uh, uh, that much of a problem for you, usually. Uh, usually, no, right. Uh, I've been on TV maybe about 60 different times. and In fact, I was on the first show at the Big 20 when they first started uh, in 1962. I rolled the first ball against Chris and he beat me. My first five times on, I lost. And my sixth time on, I had to bowl Charlie Mile and he was the first guy I beat on TV, so. Boy, that's a, that's a pretty good person to beat, I'll tell you. Right, <laughs> uh, right now, of course, uh, you're uh, back in the groove again. You've been bowling rather well. Uh, a while ago, uh, Rick Duby and you uh, had a, a pretty good roll-off uh, over at Vacation Land. In fact, he beat you by two pins, and Rick got on the show and, and uh, made a, a nice showing for a youngster of only 18 years of age. He did. I was glad to see him qualify. Uh, I practiced with him for about three weeks before this, and uh, he used to keep up with us bowl as good as we did well tonight you've uh, got no stranger to you uh, to yourself and candlepin bowling and Al Joy uh, you people have met head-to-head -head. what uh, what types of successes have you had with Al I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that <laughs> I'll retract that <laughs> you certainly know each other I've bowled him about I don't know four different times the past two or three years and it seems like he always beats me one or two pins uh, but you don't learn anything by winning, I hope, so we'll see what happens tonight. Well, that, that also proves one thing, that both of you are, are pretty decent bowlers. We've had good and matches. Yeah, you should. Good bowler, and we've both had good matches. Well, we expect one tonight, and I, I'm sure you won't disappoint us or the fans. So. All right, thanks a lot, Don, and we'll uh, bring you back up just sh very shortly. We'll take another pause, and we'll be back right after this. The Clothes Patch, York County's largest consignment resale shop, 285 Main Street, Biddeford, features like-new clothing at affordable prices for the entire family. Not only can you buy your family's clothing at low, low prices, you can also bring in recently laundered, stylish clothing in excellent condition and receive 50% of the selling price. Remember, you can turn unwanted clothing into cash at the Clothes Patch, 285 Main Street, Biddeford. Open 10 to 5, Monday through Saturday, or call 284-5313. For great summer fun, visit one of the most modern air-conditioned bowling facilities in southern Maine. Go Candle Pit Bowling today at Vacationland Bowling Center, Route 1 in Saco. What better way to exercise? Bowling, a great lifetime sport for the entire family. Summer hours at Vacation Land are 5 to 11 p.m. daily, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Wednesdays, and 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on rainy days. All right, we're back now. We're going to talk with the uh, champion of four weeks from uh, the Westbrook's Prize, Connors Lanes, uh, Al Joy. Al, you've, uh, you've had some uh, pretty good weeks overall. You had one big one in the third week with a 409, and uh, you've been bowling your average over uh, the, the, the last four bowling shows, which is about 125. How do you feel about uh, being on BTV Candlepin Bowling? Well, it's fun while I'm here. I hope it lasts long. Well, it certainly lasted uh, as long as anyone could last up to this point, certainly, as uh, you've been a champion from the very first week. Uh, you had some uh, decent competitors, too, to, uh, to bowl against. Sean Anton, certainly uh, one of the hottest bowlers in the state. Rick Duby has been bowling well as of late. And, uh, of course, Jerry LaPierre and uh, Perry Taylor, certainly uh, a good bowling uh, competition for anyone. Well, they're all pretty tough matches. You just make your own as you get going. And just hope you can come out on top. You're going to, uh, again, you're going to have to need that, uh, or you're going to need that crash ball because uh, the fellow over here that I just talked with a minute ago uh, also has a pretty good strike ball, has he not? 
Yes, he does. He, he's sleeping back there. I know he's waiting to get up here to get at me. <laughs> well, we're not gonna we're not gonna keep any uh, anyone else in suspense here any longer. We're gonna get right to the bowling at hand because uh, we know it's gonna be a good match. Good luck to you, Al, and uh, once again, congratulations on being a champion here on the show for four weeks. Thank you. Al Joy, and we'll be back with both of our bowlers as Don Saucy will lead it off right after these words. Golf by the Sea at the Old Orchard Beach Country Club. One and a half miles from Route 1 on Route 98 and one and a half miles from Main Street and Old Orchard Beach. The Old Orchard Beach Country Club is a nine-hole regulation course over 3,000 yards. Memberships and 10 play tickets are available. They're open daily till November, 7 a.m. until dark. They've got a pro shop, gas carts, rental equipment. Old Orchard Beach Country Club. Golf by the Sea. Dave Beatty's Dunkin' Donuts open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. Donuts made fresh all the time. Fresh piping hot coffee ready when you walk in. Visit Dave Beatty's Dunkin' Donuts and see the whole new store, all remodeled to help serve you better. Dave's Donuts, all the tasteful delights for you. Donuts, croissants, piping hot coffee, soups, all made to perfection at Dave Beatty's Dunkin' Donuts on Elm Street, in Biddeford. Well, we're ready, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, three strings of head-to-head -head competition with Don Saucy of the Challenger leading off in the first and third strings. Good quarter hit for Don as he leaves the four horsemen on the left side. And Don wastes no time as he starts off with a spare. Don is bowling out of the vacation land lanes in Saco, as we mentioned, has a league average of 122. Started bowling when he was 12 years of age. He's 47, so 35 years of experience on the lanes for Don. A bit full on that head pin as he puts four on his first mark. Gets a couple more. Don is the owner of uh, Don's Video in Saco and Biddeford, and also the Lord's Motel out on Route 1 in Saco. And he punches one more for a seven. So after two, Don Saucier, the challenger, has 21. Al Joy on the approach, our champion of the past four weeks. Al has the perfect temperament for a bowler. And talking with anyone that is bold at all and knows him and knows bowling, knows that he is so even-tempered and that he just has that uh, sense of inner calm, which all bowlers would like to have, even when he misses on a nine-pin drop such as that. He doesn't beat himself, in other words, and that's a great attribute in any competitor and certainly any bowler. He starts off with a 10 box. Al works for the uh, Fuller's Fire and Safety Equipment Company in Portland and is 31 years of age, as I mentioned in previous shows. Has been bowling since he was 13. That's 18 years. So both of our bowlers have met each other many times and very, very close matches emerge from those meetings. Picks out two more pins on the left side as he had the high five for a spare opportunity. A nine box. So 19 for Al Joy, 21 for Don Saucier. Two pins separate the two after two. Don getting into that one as he gets an eight pin drop, does have the 610 down there in the right hand corner with a wood right out in front. Definitely a good spare chance here for him. And again, Don Marks, second time here in the opening string. That'll move him to 31 and a bonus ball in the third frame.
right on the head pin that time the one three pocket as Don put six on that second spare. Also a definite spare opportunity with the two four seven and the five pin. And two in a row. Well Don is two thirds of his way toward bonus money and uh, as we mentioned in the uh, pre show talk. Don has been on television some 60 times winning about half of those and uh, the lights don't seem to bother him at all at least in the first four frames they don't. And Al of course is uh, becoming very accustomed to the rollaway lanes as he gets a very difficult split the 8 10. He does have a deadwood off to the left of the 8 pin. He'll use that but it didn't help him. He was going to try and swing that maybe off the uh, sideboard but everything went into the pit. And a nine box. 28. After three for Al Joy as he trails by nine through completed frames. So Don Saucy getting off to a roaring start here with three out of four marks. And Al coming back with an eight nine drop. And he's got the seven pin covered with a uh, deadwood. Once again on the lob line tonight. Foul line judge is Lula Chance and a spare for Al Joy our champion. So after four complete in the first string we have our champion Al Joy with 38 and a ball working 20 uh, 38 and a ball working Don Saucier the challenger has 47 and a ball working. We'll be back with the remainder of the first string right after these words. Don Saucier now on the approach. He's working on two in a row here in the fourth frame of the opening string. He leads in this match. We'll see by just how much after this ball. He puts seven on that mark, so each of the three marks has uh, gotten bigger in Phil. Four, six, and seven. And he has another spare opportunity for bonus money right here. Just off to the right side, missed the object pin. And a nine box. So after five, it's 63 for Don Saucier. Don's high single is 193. He has a high five, a high triple of 450, and a high five of 740. His high 10 string total is 1395. Again on the head pin, but this one just a little full as he leaves himself to 3 6 10 and the four pin. He'll have to cut that three over to the four. Very difficult, but makeable shot. He picks out the six. So no bonus money for uh, Don here in the early going as he had an opportunity with two in a row and a good cleanup shot with a nine. So as he sits after six, the challenger Don Saucier is 72. Al Joy, the champion, working on his first mark of the evening. He's 38 and a ball working here in frame number four. A little too full on the head pin. He puts four on that mark and he'll move to 42. So through four frames, the champion trails by 12. Al Joy is from uh, Westbrook. Has two children. And a good cleanup shot as he gets the 10. So with that 10, he's cut one pin off the lead. It's down to 11 after five. 63-52. Al's high single is 211. High triple, 486. He gets an eight pin drop. And he's looking at the 2-8 with some deadwood to the right of both of those pins. He'll have to hit that rather straight. And he gets the cap of the wood and drives it. Good spare for Al as he sits down and that should close the gap a little bit as Don Saucy of the challenger on the approach. As we expected this one should go right down to the wire. Both of these uh, bowlers are extremely capable and uh, High scoring bowlers. Don punches the 2 8 out, leaves himself to half Worcester left. And 
And he picks two more out. Dawn qualified with a 640 to get on the show. Oh, and a beautiful 10. And the audience certainly appreciating that shot. So Don moves to 82 after seven. So he's 12 ahead of the box. Don has won many mass pro tours and uh, the most recent in 1970. I shouldn't say many. He won one in 1970, but he has won numerous state titles. Uh, just too numerous to mention here on uh, on the air. He leaves himself with uh, the five, six, nine, ten, with a wood nestle against the five, and he got it just a little too full. Had he been a little to the left of the cap, he might have driven that across for a spare. That was a delicate shot. And good picking once again as he comes up with a ten box, 92 as Don Saucy sits down after eight. The champion, Al Joy, who has done very well on the show, by the way, in the past four weeks. He has won himself some bonus money. He has uh, also won uh, $400 for uh, each week's win. And he's won things like uh, free golf at Old Osha Beach Country Club, tickets to the uh, ballpark, to see the guides play. Also, movie passes for Sinners 8 over at uh, Five Points Shopping Center in Biddeford, to name a few. Gets a seven pin drop and a spare. So Al starting to heat up a little bit here in the middle part of the first string. Al defeated Sean Anton of the Big 20 in the first match uh, of the year. It's 364, 349. So two in a row and working on bonus money and looks like uh, Al Joy may break into the bank here. And Al has taken the lead and pads the lead a little bit more with three in a row and Al has bonus money $25. See what Don can do here in the final two frames of string number one. Just off the head pin on the left side as he leaves the one, three, six, and the seven. That's for a spear. Oh, the one pin just flew to the left of the seven pin. Good try. And a nine box. That one uh, caught the deadwood in the channel, so that will not count. So 101 after nine frames for the challenger, Don Saucier of Vacation Land Lanes in Saco. On the left side, he gets them all as the uh, five and the seven were a little bit slow in going, but uh, there wasn't too much doubt about the other eight pins. They just fell to the pit in a hurry. So a strike ball. And that's the first strike of the match. And I'm sure we'll see many more before this match is over. 111 and two balls working here in the 10th frame for Don Saucier. And he gets eight and a wiggle on the first ball. He's got another. As he leaves himself with a 310. And he does have a deadwood out in front of the three. And one nestled up against the 10. That's what's keeping it from falling right now. And nine, so a 120 for Don Saucier, the challenger. No bonus money thus far for him. However, Al Joy is working on three in a row. And he had the lead through eight frames. That was rather full as he leaves himself with a three, six, ten, and the seven, eight. There is a, a deadwood right behind the three pin and one off to the left in front of the seven. He's going to have to try and cut the three six or go to the outside either way. Oh, he cut it, but it didn't quite carry. I think the deadwood in the back canceled out any uh, further action. So five on his third mark in a row and uh, his bonus string stops right there. But he will move to one.
12 with that nine. So we've got ourselves a pretty close match. As some friendly heckling going on between both of our bowlers. A seven drop on the first ball here in the 10th frame for Al. He's looking at the three, six, and the four. Tough. Oh, very close. He almost threw that over. That is a tough shot, and you've got to be very fine in the cut on the three pin. And we've got ourselves a one pin match. So after one string complete, the champion Al Joy, 121, and the challenger Don Saucier, 120. We'll take a breather and we'll be back with second string action right after these words. All right, we're back now and the champion, Al Joy, will lead things off here in the middle string as he leads by one over Don Saucier, the challenger. 121-120, if he just joined us. And as expected, we did want to uh, provide you with some excitement tonight with uh, these two fellows, and uh, they're not disappointing uh, anyone. Also, we expected it to be very close, and you couldn't get it much closer than that unless we were at a tie. And Al gets everything but the nine pin on his spare try here in the first frame of string number two. On the line again tonight, Lula Chance, as I mentioned, and uh, our scorer and statistician over there at the scoreboard, Kathy Chassie. A 10 box to open things up here in the middle string. Al has defeated four good bowlers here in his uh, run as champion. Sean Anton, week one, Rick Duby, week two, Jerry LaPierre in week three, and just last week, Perry Taylor of the Rollaway Lanes here in Biddeford. Tonight, he's got himself uh, a good one as well as uh, Don Saucier, of course. One of the finer bowlers in the state of Maine and New England, for that matter. And that shot right there, a clinic, showed you why Al Joy is not only our champion, but thought of as one of the finest bowlers in New England. That was a beauty. You just don't make that shot too many times. So Al, 20, and a ball working as he sits. The challenger, Don Saucier, everything but the five pin. Al a little bit more on the uh, calm, cool side. Don gets into the bowling a little bit, uh, as you can see, with that extra body English. Nothing wrong with that. It's great. And he starts off just as he did string number one with a spare. I think these two bowlers bring out the best in one another. And if uh, you were to ask them, I think they would probably share that feeling. Well, Don gets a good break for not hitting the head pin. He leaves himself with the one and the ten. He does have a Deadwood off to the right of the one pin. If he can catch that properly, he may be able to use it to carry the ten. We'll see what he does as he's going for two in a row. Well, he got it to move, but just a little thin. So eight on his spare in the first box, and he's 18 after one. So through 11 boxes, Don Saucy, the challenger, leads by seven overall. Of course, he's facing a spare in the second box, so that'll tighten things up considerably. And he uses the deadwood well, comes up with a 10 box. So Don is picking very, very well here, getting a lot of uh, nines and tens, and uh, making things very close and interesting. So Saucier, 28 after two. Al Joy with that bonus ball is 24, as he puts four on the mark. So overall, it's three pins separating the two, with Saucier now in the lead. Off the head pin that time. Once again, a good crowd on hand here at the rollaway lane, says they watch a good cleanup ball, but both Deadwood kind of canceled each other out. Looked like a 10 box, but the rolling wood came across the plate, and uh, they canceled each other out, as I mentioned, and a nine. So Al Joy goes to 33 after three. He's three ahead of the box. 
There's the old crash ball, and everything goes but the wiggling 10 pin. He does have a Deadwood covering the 10, so it will make it a lot easier to shoot at for the spare. And another spare for Al Joy as he sits down after four. He's 43, and one ball working. Don Saucier's league average is 122. Al's is 125. So both of them are, uh, even after one, are very close to their average. Punch on the left side for Don as he looks at a 1, 3, 4, 7, 9, 10 for the spare. Oh, beautiful shot. We're looking at two of the best at... Uh, Picking up some unusual breaks and uh, spare combinations as Al picked up one just moments ago and now uh, Don coming right back with one of his own. Those are so pretty to watch. They make it look easy, but I'll tell you, it isn't as easy as it looks. Right on the head pin, and he gets everything to go but the 5 8. The 5 8 with two pieces of deadwood rolling out front. One a little closer to the five, the other one way out. And it's going to be difficult for him to uh, to get by that, but he may choose to go for the pins. We'll wait and see. He did. He went right for the pins. And, you know, that's two in a row. Most bowlers will tell you, or good bowlers will tell you, if they can go for the good shot without the deadwood, especially when it's out like that, they will go for it. So, in the middle string, after four complete, it's the challenger, 56, and the, the cha champion, 43, both of them having a ball working. We're going to be back with the second string action right after this message. Don Saucier has opened up a 12-pin lead in the match now as he has two working in a row. Al Joy on the approach right now has one in a row, of course, and uh, like to get a string of them going here in the middle of the second string. He gets an eight drop, leaves the 310. There is a Deadwood to the left, and also just barely touching the 10 pin. So eight on the fill. And another spare as Al Joy has two in a row. Over four weeks, the champion Al Joy has been averaging for three strings, 375. His high string was a uh, high triple was 409 on the show. And his, well, he gets a nine pin drop on that fill and certainly has an opportunity here for uh, more bonus money. His low string on the show thus far has been 349. He's been averaging just about his average, 125. And he used the right hand Deadwood. He knew he, uh, he knew he had to get a break on that one and he, <laughs> As he goes back, he says to Don, well, uh, I'll take it. It's three in a row, but that's not exactly the way I played it. <laughs> he was out a little further than he wanted to be, but it did carry. So three in a row for the champion as he's 80 in a ball working as he sits. Don on two in a row here. Would like to get a big fill. And he gets seven, eight. So uh, the Deadwood does roll off into the channel. It gives him another opportunity here for bonus money. He has yet to get bonus money. Al Joy thus far has $50 in bonus money. And Don Saucier has bonus money. 25. In the middle string, three in a row for Don Saucier. And he still has the lead. If he can continue to mock, he'll continue with that lead. We'll see what he puts on this one. On the head pin, but a little too full. He leaves the three, six, four, seven. A tough spare. Very difficult, but he can uh, cut it over there if uh, gets in that little slot. Now oh, down off to the right side, picks out the six pin. So six on that third spare and nine pin lead through completed frames for Don Sauce here. And he sits with an 88 after six. However, Al Joy working on three in a row and a mark opposite that 88. 
So he will slice into that lead. Which has been cut to uh, nine pins. A little full, but he gets a good roll from the Deadwood and another nine pin drop for Al Joy. So he's getting big fills here in the middle of the second string. As both bowlers seem to uh, be getting untracked, although they started out with 120 and 121. That's not too shabby in anyone's language. So Al Joy leads by two overall. And he's got another one going. That's $35 in bonus money. Here in the middle string. So in the match, he has $60 thus far. So a spare up and four in a row. Al Joy, the champion, comes back with seven. And he moves to 106. This for five in a row and more bonus money. And he's got it. So Al Joy really coming to life here as he has throughout the past four weeks. His middle string has been his best string. He's had a 152, a 153, and this one has certainly got the earmarks of a big one as well. Five in a row, $45 in bonus money. He's regained the lead. And Don Sasia with a strike ball. I'm telling you, if you want to see some good bowling, <laughs> stick around. We've got ourselves a match. Don trying to get back into the uh, match and also take the lead again if he can with this big mark. He uh, nearly had a double. Of course, if you get a uh, triple strike, that is worth a $300 Pioneer radio from LeBlanc's radio and TV on Elm Street in Biddeford. We've had two strikes in a row on a show, but uh, no luck on three uh, thus far. That one looked awfully good, though. As Lula Chance went down and checked the Deadwood, and it was uh, okay. And two in a row for Don Saucia. Boy, I'll tell you, the people here are not uh, disappointed in the least in this match. See if Al can start up a string of his own. As Don Saucia has regained the lead. Or continue, I should say, Al Joy is still on uh, a string of uh, five in a row. I shouldn't say start up another string. He's still on a string of five in a row. And he moves to 125 with that nine pin drop, looking at the seven. And he's got six in a row. Six in a row for the champion. And no breathing room for either bowler, as Don Saucia moments ago had regained the lead. But uh, Al Joy may have taken it back again. We'll have to wait and see as he punches four out of the middle. He'll move to 139 through nine. And he has $55 in bonus money. And it will end there in this string, at least. So he has 80 in bonus money thus far. 25 in the first string to go along with his 55. Of course, $100 for the winner. $50 for the loser, regardless of bonus money or anything else. And a seven box for 146 and a great total of 267 after two for Al Joy, our champion. Now Dawn working on two in a row and he'd like to get additional bonus money. He has $25 this string already and he gets six and a wiggle. Six moves him to 124, so he trails by two through eight in the match. However, he's facing a spare with four on it in the ninth frame, so he doesn't want to lose any ground there. As he goes for another, and that would have been three in a row in bonus money, but he missed. He cut it over a little too thin. Nine box, 133. For the challenger here in the middle string. And Don Saucier will need a mark here if he is going to regain the lead as he sits down after two full strings. We'll see what happens here in the 10th frame as both of these bowlers are just bringing out the best in each other. Don on the left side as he goes for the 1-2 pocket leaves the diamond. He does have a deadwood 
in between the six and the nine. Everything but the six pin, just a little bit thin. So we've got ourselves a very close one after two here as Don Saucia finishes up with a 10 box and a 143. So after two strings complete, it's the champion, Al Joy, 267, Don Saucia of Vacation Land, the challenger, 263. Four pins separate the two bowlers overall, and we'll be back with our third and final string of the evening right after this. We're ready now for the third string of action here as uh, rollaway lanes are heating up. On the approach, the challenger, Don Saucier, as he trails by four pins overall, 267 to 263. Two fine strings right here in the middle, and we'll see what they can do in the uh, finale here as they're off and running, and Don had everything going there. Looked like a crash ball, uh, a true strike, but the solid 10 pin still stands for the spare. Oh, it's a, a nine box as nine as he uh, caught the just the uh, side of the deadwood in the in the channel. Just a very very delicate shot. Not an awful lot of room to work on, but he uh, comes up with a nine box. On the head pin once again. This time he leaves himself with a uh, a little different split. It's a seven eight and a ten. He does have three pieces of deadwood on the plate. We'll see what he can do. He'll have to give that front deadwood a ride and hope that he can get some uh, sidewall action. Well, he did, but he only got the 10 pin. Might mention that in our 16th show of the year, that'll be in the uh, latter part of August or early September, we're going to have the top four scorers on the... Uh, overall show come back in a uh, matchup thus far Al Joy has a 409 and he heads that list Rick Duby is second with a 354 total Sean Anton 349 is third and Jerry Lapierre is uh, fourth with 338 oh, what a spare a half whistle left and Al cleaned them all up for a spare here in the opening box of string three uh, if things continue as they are, of course, Don Saucia certainly is going to move into that top four, and he'll be one of them who will come back. The format of that show will be the number one qualifier versus number four. The number two scorer will bowl against the number three, and then, of course, the winners of both of those strings will go head-to-head -head for the final uh, overall show champion. And we'll have some extra bonus money, uh, or prize money, I should say. What a beautiful... Cleanup shot there for two in a row. Al Joy is getting hot. He put seven on his mark and then a spare right on top of that. So he's working on uh, two in a row as he opens up string three. So that should be a real fun show in week number 16. And coming right back with that big first ball, Don Saucier is still leaving that solid 10 pin. Last time he had some deadwood that cost him the uh, spare. Let's see if he can go right at it this time without the deadwood in the channel. Well, oh, this time he went a little too far to the left. He gets it for a 10. So Don Saucier is 28 after three. Al Joy after two is 27 and a bonus ball. Off the head pin to the left that, uh, that time, and uh, one of the deadwoods uh, rolling right out toward the lob line and then some, the foul line, I should say, and then some. I'll get it right. That's the uh, deadwood line. And Lula Chance gets a nice round of applause as he cheer it clears the uh, deadwood into the channel. Four horsemen right side. And the eight pin. And the six pin remains. Good try by Don. 
And again, good picking. 38. Two nines, two tens for Don Saucia, but right now he needs to mark as the champion. Al Joy is working on two in a row. He already has $80 in bonus money. Don has $25 thus far in bonus money. A little full, but he gets a break as the six pin wiggled and then finally fell into the 10. So he leaves himself the two, four, seven. Deadwood behind and to the right will not come into play. As Al Joy has three in a row and more bonus money. So he has moved up now to 105 in the bonus column. Three in a row. Working on more. He punches through. He's got the spread eagle and the eight pin. Goes to the right side as he puts three on that spare. So Al has opened up a, uh, the most sizable lead that either bowler has put together thus far in the string. And he comes up with a good cleanup uh, shot of seven. And after four, it's the champion, Al Joy of Pride's Corner, 44. The challenger, Don Saucier of Vacation Land Lanes in Saco, 38. I checked that, 54 to 38. We'll be back with the remaining six boxes right after. All right, we're back now, and the lead overall is uh, opened up by Al Joy, is 20 pins, as uh, he's really gotten uh, his act together in the second and third strings. Just came off three in a row as he opened up, and it's 54-38 in this string. However, he had a four-pin lead after two, so it's 20 pins overall as Don Saucia looks at the four husband on the right side and the seven pin for a spare. Don is yet to mark here in the uh, third string. Well, he got everything going, but uh, the seven and ten, the goal post still down there. The champion of uh, this show, nice ten box by Don as he used the Deadwood. The champion of this show will uh, meet Dickie Allen of the Pride's Corner Lanes in Westbrook. And Dickie Allen, of course, no stranger to Candlepin Bowling in the state of Maine. So either Al or uh, Don will have their hands full in the next match next week. But right now, they're worrying about each other, and uh, that's where their focus should be. The one, two, and the ten remain for spare for Don. And again, very close, but no cigar. A nine box. 57 for Don Saucier. Is, uh, he is yet to mark in six boxes of string number three. He had a 120 and a 143, or a 263 total through two. Al Joy. 267 via a 121, 146. A little full on the head pin, leaves the high five. That's the 3610 on the right and the 47 on the left. Down by, picks out the 610. And an eight box. So the match now is. Uh, 18 pins apart, 62, 48 through five, as Don Saucia trails by 18. And a strike ball, so he'll trail by more than that as Al puts up a strike in the sixth frame, and his fourth mark here of this uh, third string. Don is gonna have to put something together in a hurry. He has four frames remaining. And he has an excellent two-string total, but he's going to have to get something going here if he wants to stay in contention. Off the head pin, leaves the one, two, four, and the 10 for the spare. He picks out the two, four. And a nine box, 66. So 
Don's going to have to get some big marks going here as he has. It all boils down to three frames. He's explosive enough. He can do it. He just needs to get a run going. Oh, he's off the head pin. As he has a ball that works from right to left, it curves, and uh, he just went by the head pin. Probably trying to get that little extra. And he punches two more out. So Don's struggling here in the third string. And Al Joy not letting up. A seven. And he moves to 73 after eight. Al Joy on a strike. And he gets a break. As it looked like he might get a spread eagle, he ended up with a good spare opportunity here for two in a row. As he's working on a mark, that's the strike, of course. He's got the 4-7. Three pieces of deadwood off to the right side. He want to go right for those pins. Play it safe. Oh, oh! He picked out the four, it hit into the pit, and it came back. And Al, <laughs> with a little bit of a grin on his face, can't believe it. When you're going right, those kinds of things happen. When you're not, he would have picked that clean. So he puts 20 on that strike, comes back with another chance here for three in a row as he leaves himself with a 3-6 for three in a row. So Al really in command as he has opened up a sizable lead and more bonus money. Al Joy is going to break the bank tonight. The first week he couldn't get bonus money and neither could Sean Anton. Tonight he has $130 in bonus money to $25 for Don Saucier thus far. So it's 38 pins in the lead through completed frames. And Al Joy, uh, of course, is going to pad that even more as he has a, a, a mock working in frame number eight. But he hasn't put a fill on it yet. The 3, 5, 6, 10 for a spare. And Don gets everything to wiggle. In, even the five pin, but it didn't go. Now, as someone's saying up back, if that were Al, it would have gone. But Al has had his share of luck as well as some skill shots to go with it. But Don has uh, had a few of those that just wiggled but wouldn't go, or a solid 10 pin. So it's a 10 box. And 83 through 9. No marks for Don. Good picking, but that's not enough. Not when you're uh, bowling the likes of Al, Al Joy. So this match is over, and Dickie Allen, next week's challenger, will be facing another fellow Pride's Connor bowler, Al Joy, who is a champion of five weeks now. But Don Saucier will move into that top four with a 10 box and a 93 string. He moves to 356, and he edges out Rick Doobie for the second spot. So he is number two behind Al Joy in the top four scorers. Uh, and that means that if this holds, certainly, he'll be back in the uh, 16th week. Of course, we've got a long way to go. We never know what's going to happen, but a nice 356 for Don Saucier, but certainly not what he would like to have had. That 93 string really hurt him. Six on the third mark and uh, that run of bonus money for Al Joy. He punches one more out and he moves to 116 and 124 now in frame number nine. So this one is just about history as Al Joy comes up with two big strings after a, uh, a string just about his average at 121 in the opener. He's at 124 now and he's got the Four, seven, eight, with some deadwood camped around the four pin. And another spare. So Al making it look awfully easy here, as he has in the past four weeks. He's 134 and one ball working. Again, he's over 400. He has a 409. 
And with four more, he goes to 138. And a 405 total for Al as he has gone over 400 two weeks out of the five that he has been on BTV Candle Pin Bowling. So, the champion of five weeks now, Al Joy, 405. The challenger, Don Saucier of Vacation Land Lanes in Saco, 356. We'll be back to talk with both of our bowlers right after this. Weir's Motors, Southern Maine's truck center, proudly introduces the 1988 full-size Sierra two- and four-wheel drive trucks. The 88 Sierras are aerodynamically designed. A tired one he, uh, he is, I'm sure, but uh, uh, a happy one, too, because he picked up some bonus money. Come on up here, Don. Congratulations. Um, as, uh, as we noted, the, uh, the first two strings, you, uh, you guys were right there, head-to-head -head as uh, we expected. But then uh, a 93 string to a 138, and of course that was the difference. You, you just couldn't seem to uh, get on the head pin the way you were in the first two strings. What happened in that third string, Don? I wish I knew. Uh, I knew I bowled good the first two, but I was still behind. I knew I was you know, up against a good bowler, and uh, I started right off missing a nine-pin drop. And I went downhill after that. Yeah, you had uh, you had two good balls there. You had a uh, a nine pin drop on uh, two out of the first three boxes there in that third string. Uh, the first one, of course, you caught just the side of the deadwood, and that really was a a very delicate shot at best. But uh, that seemed to take the steam out of you. Then you came back with the uh, the ten pin again, all alone, and you went to the left side. And of course, when you don't get that momentum going, sometimes that's all it takes. And then Don, I mean uh, Al, kind of got into a groove early. He got three in a row, and and uh, put you further behind, that adds a little extra pressure, does it not? You can't afford to miss anything against Al, and that's that's what makes it even harder, because if you miss one or two spares against him in a three-string match, you're in trouble. Okay, uh, I want to present you with, uh, you did get $25 in bonus money, uh, $50 for the loser's share, so it's a total of $75, so it wasn't all uh, in vain, certainly, and uh, again, it's always a pleasure to watch you guys bowl. Thanks, Don. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Don Saucier, a great challenger and a great bowler. And uh, we're going to take a pause, and we'll be back with the presentation of the awards for the uh, champion, Al Joy, of five weeks now. Don't go away. We take so much for granted in life. We often ignore symptoms, warnings of something wrong. All right, we're back now, and uh, I want to bring Al Joy up, if I could. You're, you're probably running out of space, but I'm running out of adjectives. Uh, Al, once again, uh, here's the uh, fifth in a row here for you. Uh, a nice trophy from Sportline Center, Trophy Center in, uh, in uh, Portland. And uh, you, uh, you know, the first week we started off slowly. You and Sean didn't get into the uh, bonus money column very much. In fact, not at all. Then after that, you kind of, uh, you kind of touched the banker uh, for uh, 25 or 50 here and there. But tonight, you had some pretty good runs. You had 25 in the first string. You had 60, uh, ch check that, six in a row for 55 in the middle string. And then you came back with 50 more uh, after that. So you added, uh, added all up, and it comes to $130 just in bonus money. Not too bad. I was losing track of what I had. I couldn't remember, so I just hope you had it. That's, that's why I was there. Yeah, you can double-check my figures later. But uh, So it's 130 in bonus money, also $100 for the win. So that's not too bad. A, uh, uh, well, an hour's work, say. Right. $230 an hour. That's pretty good pay. That's better than I make. <laughs> <laughs> that's better than you and I make together. So there's a check for $230. Also... We got for you, once again, you know him almost as well as I do. <laughs> You've got uh, two Cinez 8 passes, uh, five points uh, shopping center, or if you want to take in a couple of more movies. Uh, we also have something new this week from Palace Playland, some tickets, a uh, book of tickets. Uh, it's worth uh, a lot of money and uh, a lot of rides, a lot of fun down there at Palace Playland no Land in Old Orchard Beach. We have... Uh, Two guides, tickets to the ballpark. Uh, Tidewater's coming and uh, Dwight Gooden coming in this weekend, I understand, so you might want to get down there. And uh, also, we have uh, some more golf uh, uh, certificates for you here for uh, Old Orchard Beach Country Club. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, again, uh, you went over 400 tonight, uh, 409 before, 405 tonight. You uh, really like these lanes here at Rollaway, don't you? Does that mean I grabbed Don for another sponsorship? For the video? That's right. That's right. And you got the uh, membership as well, a VCR membership. You're right. 
Thanks for reminding me. I had completely forgotten about that one, too. And uh, so it's uh, two you've got now with that 409 and 405. So once again, congratulations. And uh, we're going to let you put all those things down. We're going to take another break. Okay. Then we're coming back, or have you come back, and we're going to have the home viewer drawing right after this.